Slayers, I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my good friend and co-host Ananga Sivir. In this week's Anxiety Slayer podcast, we're responding to the question, how can I help myself when my anxiety gets triggered? Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shan. Always good to spend time with you. And I'm glad we're talking about this because right now, so many of the people in our group are feeling triggered and have been asking us. What, what they can do when that comes up so that it doesn't go into a full-blown anxiety attack. Yeah. Where do we begin? The first thing really is to take a self-audit, to step back. Um, the anxious mind, when we get triggered, will panic. It will fear itself. We fear anxiety. We fear anxiety is coming back and we start having thoughts like, I can't cope or I thought I was over this. So to just step back, take a deep breath, and Have a look at anything behind the trigger. Do you know what triggered you? Have you seen things in the last few weeks or even months that have been piling up and increasing anxiety? Is there anything you can cut out, anything you can reduce that you feel is firing up anxiety? We tend to go into full-blown anxiety mode where we get trapped in by the anxiety from from taking care of ourselves but the first step really is to have a look and see what's triggering me and is there anything practical I can do about it let's talk about some of the common anxiety triggers I know that the first one that comes up for me is disturbing news there has been so much of it over the last couple of years and frankly let's be honest there's been so much of it ever since the invention of the news media, right? Because they're looking for these stories that are big stories that are often very sad and very disturbing and cause their own host of triggers depending on who you are and your background and your upbringing and and what you've experienced up until this point in your life. So that's one for sure. And additional Triggers to look out for include caffeine. Be mindful of how much caffeine you have in your diet. Energy drinks are not your friend. If you suffer from anxiety, they are something that needs to leave your life. Being mindful and aware of how much coffee you drink. You drink coffee. And of course, anything violent or scary or fast paced in your face. Music, movies, TV, video games, anything that's coming at you. That's how I think of it. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm being assaulted by my screens or (laughs) you know what I mean? Well, we are sometimes, yeah. Yeah, is to be aware of that. And then, of course, the day-to-day stress, social pressure, expectations or confrontations that come with being human working at home in this in the village that I live in there's lots of sounds all the time there's uh, car alarms that go off there's people cutting the lawn the village workers do different jobs and things and so they have those trucks with the beeping and anyway dogs barking etc and so I have this wonderful pair of sony noise canceling over the ear headsets that have changed my entire life just because I noted that I didn't like feeling agitated by life like by people just getting right by people just getting on with with what it is they need to do and I could be locked in my castle anxious and angry or I could note that oh I know what to do I know how this will help me Um, I can put these headsets on or I can remove myself from an environment until it it becomes more calm and relaxed or, or what have you. And that doesn't make you a mean, terrible person if you can't hang in those environments. It's okay. Do what you can and care for yourself. 
yeah, again, I think it's asking, you know, what do I need? When we feel triggered, we need to take extra care. We don't need to be irritated with ourselves. We don't need to feel that we've let ourselves or others down. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Triggering has happened. How do we respond? How do we care for ourselves? One of the most commented on episodes that we've shared is what to do when we get triggered by noise and, and how anxiety is affected by noise. We've had so much response to that episode. and. It's a fact that the anxious mind can't always take a lot of external um, noise. It feels overstimulated. Or we can be really jumpy when we're anxious. I can be really jumpy. That's how I know if my anxiety is up or if I'm overtired, I get jumpy. And you know, that's one of the things that Dr. Dean brought forward is the extra jumpiness is a clue that we're low in magnesium. Mm -hmm. That at this point in her life and, and getting her magnesium levels where they need to be, that she can be in a room with somebody who, let's say they break a vase of flowers or you know something comes crashing down and she won't even jump. Mm -hmm. It'll just be like, oh, that vase of flowers broke. I guess I better clean it up. <laughs> Instead of, ah, what was that? Right. Ducking for cover or, or what have you. Yeah. Really, it can help to keep a note, actually write down and commit things to more factual information on a piece of paper than the information the anxious mind's going to give us because it's going to make things as bad as they possibly can be. It, it will always make things feel worse. So keep a note of what you notice adds to your anxiety and see what changes you can make. When we get triggered, we need to make sure that we're reducing triggers and taking care of ourselves and coming back to center. So just make a note on a piece of paper. How do you feel if you watch a certain TV show? How do you feel afterwards? If you drink coffee, how do you feel afterwards? We have this in the West, very emotional relationship with caffeine where people will say, I need my coffee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's harming us. It's making us feel worse. So have a look, jot it yeah. down and see. Fast-paced entertainment, video games, they can be so incredibly immersive and compelling because they take us away from our life that we might be struggling with, but they can throw us into another scenario, which is quite anxiety-inducing and adrenaline-increasing. So have a look, note it down, have a look at your responses, your heart rate. And again, heart rate is something that can be a real trigger. We have many members in our group that have stopped wearing devices like Fitbits with heart rate monitors because they don't like seeing their heart rate elevate and that causes them concern. So we don't want to fixate on heart rate in a, um, in a way that increases anxiety, but the heart does pump faster in certain situations. And mm -hmm. if it's being elevated by caffeine, movies, drama, video games, things like that, in an uncomfortable way, in a way that isn't serving us well, then we need to really look for alternatives to those diversions. And, you know, this is why it's incredibly important for us to pay attention to the things that help us feel safe and relaxed. So just as we're noting down the things that, that cause us to feel more anxious, also pay attention to what makes you feel better. What kind of creative activities make you feel better? Maybe gardening or painting or maybe yoga or walking, any reading that inspires you, certainly guided relaxations and breathing practices, all of these things are available to you and you can find out, okay, what, what helps me feel better here? And then you practice focusing on whatever reduces your anxiety, even if it's only the tiniest little bit and see what changes. Yeah, and that's really the key, isn't it? Yeah, it's just bit by bit. You can you can include a little bit at a time until you've created a life that really is as calm and relaxed as possible in between the, the times when we need to be a little bit more in our hit to place, a little bit more in our action oriented living. Uh, but having the spaciousness around that, having the place around those tasks and responsibilities that we have as adults in the world, 
changes everything. And I, I'm living proof of that. Yeah. Again, I think it's really important to understand that anxiety will tell you nothing's going to work. Anxiety will tell you you're weak. The, un, the unguarded, untamed mind acts like our enemy, our worst enemy. So it knows all the psychological triggers to, to play with, with us. And we need to remember that there's always something we can do to help ourselves feel calm, help ourselves feel more grounded, more at ease more in control of our mind, more in control of anxiety. And it's these little actions, taking a walk, doing some breathing. Go on YouTube, try a Qigong practice, just look up Qigong for anxiety. Try a guided tapping practice, have a look on our website and use the search bar at the top. Type in guided meditation or tapping. We've got so many free resources you can just follow along with, with us. We've also got a free Anxiety Slayer starter course which you can find a link to on our website with guided tapping, guided meditations, and some lessons on the basics of how to get in control of anxiety, how to regain a sense of safety and calm and hope, because anxiety can make us feel hopeless when we think, that's it, I'm triggered, I'm back to square one. There's always something we can do to feel more calm and more hopeful again. So let's talk a little bit more about getting back to basics, how to pay attention to three key areas. The first thing is to notice what makes anxiety feel worse and reduce those things. Not in some very definite fighting mentality, just in a self-care, a sense of self-care and self-compassion. Notice what makes anxiety feel worse the things we've already outlined that might be triggers. Cut those back. Then have a think about what helps your anxiety feel better. Even the simplest thing, like a cup of chamomile tea, talking to a friend, trying some tapping, going for a walk, and increase those things. And again, not rigidly, no pressure. Just pick a couple of things. And I would like to add, not taking yourself so seriously. Laugh at yourself. It's been a saving grace for me to be able to witness my behavior and how I can make things so heavy or so important or so frightening or and, and, and then to laugh at it and be like, oh, that's so funny. Before we came together today to, to record this, I was telling you that I was really a bit out of balance with my pitta brain. And was feeling very sharp and judgmental and all of those things. And we had a little talk and we had a laugh about it. And I know what to do. I know I need to get my feet in the water. I know that I need to focus on having cool drinks and, uh, and allowing myself to just chill out, right? Those kinds of things, getting back to the basics. Yeah, knowing your basics as well. We're all different. Yes. We all have different needs. Some of us might need to curl up and be warm. Some of us might need to get out and, and march. Some of us might need to walk mindfully and slowly and peacefully. And also not to worry if you go to walk and you feel initially a little disconnected from your surroundings. Just get your snoot in the flowers <laughs> and feel the leaves and the textures of the bark. Get as many senses involved as you can and let your senses draw you in to nature. And if it's the smallest patch, even if it's a pot of herbs, to rub the leaves and smell them, look at the textures, look at the colours, really uh, have a relationship with the information that your senses are bringing you. Anxiety can make us feel very disconnected. And we can reconnect, but we're going to have to make the effort, take it slowly, be curious, be inquisitive. And if you do have a garden, I invite you to wake up a little bit earlier each day or whatever it is you need to do and, and start your day there. Even, even five minutes makes a difference. It's how I start every day during the growing season. And it's made my days so just so much sweeter. So the other key area is knowing the skills, knowing the tools that can help you. 
slay your anxiety and having a sweet attitude about it. So mm. to slay your anxiety stealthily, keep an eye on it, keep check on it, but to deal with it quietly, persistently, steadily, have the skills in place that you need, whatever appeals to you. Many of the members of our group do extremely well with tapping. Find something that you can relate to, maybe guided meditations, qigong, some yoga stretching, um, listening to an immersive, uplifting audio book while doing something creative. Find something for you that you know you can rely on that's going to help you feel steady. Know what helps and keep doing it. Give it a chance. Keep doing it. And don't let yourself off the hook. And what I mean by that is don't believe your mind when it says this isn't working or I don't like this or how is this even going to help me or any of that because that that is not the truth. That is your mind. That is your ego. That is something other than the reality of your situation. Be patient. Keep trying. Don't listen. That's when we have that conversation of, okay, I hear you, but that is not going to help me in this case. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep looking for things that help make me feel better. Yeah, and have some simple system in place that helps you do that. Maybe get an app on your phone, one of those apps that you set an intention, a habit, and you don't break the chain. There's apps where you know you have to tick every day, and it will remind you and encourage you to do that. I sometimes will go back to those. If I'm overtired or I've been through a period of intense stress or illness, I'll download something like that, and I'll just pick two or three things. My nature is to put 20 things on there. So <laughs> I make myself just pick two or three simple things that I know are going to serve me well and tick them off each day and soon feel the benefit of that. Or a calendar, a paper calendar, just put a cross on the calendar or a tick on the calendar, a flower, <laughs> draw a flower, whatever works for you. It's got to be in keeping with your individual nature, what works for you to help you keep something going and feel motivated and sweet about it, kind to yourself about it. And we know that Having these triggers come up is not any fun, but having the ability to know what to do, having the ability to say, ah, I can use my baklava remedies. I can use the calm point. I can get myself outside. I can, you know, and the list goes on and on. And there's so much to, to be empowered is such a powerful, powerful way to move through these triggers. And to get on the other side of them and to trust yourself, to really be in a space where I've got this, even though this feels really uncomfortable right now, I know what to do and I've got this. Yeah, it's a completely different experience to feeling helpless and overwhelmed and feeling at the mercy of anxiety. And if you haven't done so already, we invite you to get access to our totally free Anxiety Slayer starter course. There is so much helpful information in that course. It's totally free. You will love it. We have had such great feedback on this course. So go to anxietyslayer.com and grab the course if you haven't done so already. And even if you signed up for it a while ago, it's worth revisiting. You'll find some new supportive tools and techniques to help you if you're feeling triggered. 